Hello! Welcome to our introduction video on getting started with Jupyter, brought to you by the instructor team at Haycoders. In this video, we'll share with you how to use the Jupyter user interface and guide you through the steps to set up your AI100 Jupyter workspace on your computer. Before we start, please ensure you've downloaded both Jupyter notebook files we've provided, the Session 1 student notebook, as well as the Jupyter Playground. These files end with the IPYNB file extension, and we'll be using them in this tutorial. Please also ensure you've gone through our Anaconda and Jupyter installation guide that we've prepared for you. This document provides step-by-step -step instructions for both Windows and Mac users, which can be accessed from page 2 and page 4 respectively. At the end of this guide, you should be able to launch the Jupyter Notebook app, which opens a web page in your default browser looking like this. Now let's see how this looks like on my computer. I'm using a Windows machine for this demo, but there shouldn't be major differences for Mac users. After launching the Jupyter Notebook app, you should see a command prompt or terminal like this pop up. Do not close this window as this hosts the Jupyter Notebook server, which must remain open throughout the entire time when you view and edit your Jupyter Notebooks. Here's the URL for accessing the Jupyter page. Alternatively, you should already have it open in your default browser. We highly recommend that you use the Google Chrome browser, which is most compatible with the Jupyter environment. Now let's get started with the Jupyter interface. If you look at this page, you should see many familiar folders, such as Desktop, Documents, and Downloads. In fact, this mirrors your computer's file system, except that the Jupyter interface looks a little different from Windows Explorer or Finder for Mac users. Let's access the Downloads folder, for example. In this folder, you should see all the files you've recently downloaded, including the two Jupyter Notebook files. To access the parent folder, you can either click the two dots right here or this folder icon to get to the root folder. Now let's try creating a new folder. Click New and Folder and you should see an untitled folder show up. Check the checkbox and rename it. Let's call it AI100. Now let's go into our AI100 folder, which serves as our workspace. It is currently empty, so let's create a new Jupyter Notebook by clicking New, Python 3. This opens up a new tab and an empty Jupyter Notebook. You could click Untitled to change the name of the notebook, but let's skip this step for now. Instead, let's try to run our first line of Python code. Print Hello. To execute this line of code, you can click Run. Congrats! You've just run your first line of Python code on the Jupyter Integrated Development Environment, also known as the IDE. When you're done with the notebook, make sure to click Save before you go back to the previous tab. In this folder, you should see the untitled Jupyter Notebook, as well as a green icon telling you that the notebook is still running. To stop it, click the checkbox and shut it down. And this is when you can also use this method to rename the notebook. You can name it whatever you want, but I'll call it My Notebook. Next, let's upload the two Jupyter notebooks provided at the start of this tutorial. Click Upload, look for your downloads folder, and click on Session 1, Student Notebook. Open it. You have the option to rename this notebook, but let's skip this and click the Upload button. You see that the notebook has been uploaded right now, and you can also click onto it to open a new tab. Note that the notebook might take a while to open due to the embedded images that take a longer time to render. Congrats! You just opened your student notebook. Note that it comes complete with many images, visualizations, as well as code chunks. We will be covering these in detail during session one. 
Now you may be wondering, what can I do with a Jupyter Notebook? Let's find out in the Jupyter Playground. Note that this file takes a much shorter time to load. This is the Jupyter Notebook interface. Here is your title, which you can change by double-clicking it. This is your menu bar with the text. And this bar with all the buttons is called your toolbar. In a Jupyter Notebook, you get cells of many types, such as code cells and markdown cells that stores your text. You can actually change your code cells to markdown cells in this way. Look for the drop down on the toolbar next to the right arrow button, change it to markdown, and press run. You now see that this now looks like a markdown cell, just like the one above. You can also change this cell to a code cell, but beware, when you run it, it would try to execute this as Python code, and this is where you get an invalid syntax error. Now let's revert. Now that we've reverted the configurations, let's move on to the next part. There are two modes in a Jupyter Notebook, the edit mode and the command mode. Let me demonstrate the differences to you. The edit mode happens when you are editing a cell, just like this. To know that you're in an edit mode, you should see a green cell border. To escape the edit mode, press the escape key and it will bring you to the command mode. Now you see that the cell is in a blue border. Another way you can tell the difference is in your top right hand corner. You can see that there is no icon here, but when you go into the edit mode with the green border, you can see a pencil icon here. To activate the modes, you can either press escape and enter to toggle, or click either within the shaded area or outside the shaded area. Now let me get you started on some commands and shortcuts for each mode. In edit mode, you can actually, instead of clicking the run button here, use the shortcut shift plus enter to run you see that this code runs successfully. Make sure you save your code regularly, either by clicking this button or pressing Ctrl S or Command S if you're on Mac. To command or uncommand code, you can use Ctrl slash or Command slash if you're on Mac. You can also do this for many lines of code at a time by highlighting the chunk of code. Now let's look at shortcuts in command mode. Before we start, make sure to click outside the shaded area or press escape. You should see that the cell now has a blue border. To copy cell, let's try the first shortcut, C. To paste it, press V. You see that this cell is now copied below. Next, you can press X to delete cell. However, Note that this is quite a dangerous operation and you are reminded to save your work regularly. Otherwise, you might lose some important work. To undo this deletion, you can press Z. The last command is B, which allows you to add cells below. To see more shortcuts, you can simply click Help, Keyboard Shortcuts, to show you the full list of command and edit mode shortcuts available. This tutorial only exposes you to a few that we find very helpful for your work. You can also see the full user interface tour by clicking help, user interface tour. Using left and right arrows, you should be able to navigate through this tour. You've come to the end of this introduction video. Thank you.